Today, as you can see, I am here with three pianos. And these aren't just any old pianos. This one over here is a few week old Steinway D with the Spiro system installed. This one here is a few month old Fazioli F308. And this one here is a Bosendorfer 290 Imperial that I believe is several years old. So I am here in this one room and I'm going to be doing a three-way comparison against three world-class pianos. And I've never had this opportunity to do this before, especially not with these particular pianos. And I'm probably never going to have the opportunity anywhere else in the world except right here in this room. Now, the person who owns these pianos actually has a YouTube channel, and I'll put his channel in the description of this video. Make sure to go over there, say hi, tell him thank you for inviting me to his house, and all that stuff because he is an absolutely wonderful person. He's a piano enthusiast just like me. Could you tell? And he has amazing pianos, and it's so much fun to come here and play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play um, a piece on one of the pianos, and then just jump to the next piano, play the same piece, and then play the same piece on the third. And I think I'm going to start off with newest to oldest. So the Steinway is just a few weeks old, so I'm going to start off by playing a piece on there, jump to the Fazioli, play the same piece on there, and then go to the Bosen River and play the same piece on there. Then after that, I'll probably loop back around to the Steinway, give my thoughts on the sound of that piece, and then play another piece and do the same thing. So hopefully you guys get the idea. I'm going to be playing a couple of test pieces that I've written to test out the sound of pianos, a couple of Bach pieces, and also an excerpt of Debussy. And I might throw in a couple of other things if I feel like the piano really shows off that piece particularly well. So you might be wondering, before I get into this video here, you might be thinking that this video is a little bit imbalanced because the F308 is 308 centimeters long. It's like 10 feet, two inches long. The Steinway Model D is only eight and a half feet. Actually, no, it's not eight and a half. It's eight foot 11 and three quarters. My bad. Eight foot 11 and three quarters. So it is significantly smaller than the F308. It's also significantly smaller than the 290, I believe, by a few inches. Maybe a little bit less than that, but it is a little bit smaller. So you might be thinking that it's a little bit of an unfair comparison, but if you think about it this way, the Model D, especially with the Spirit system, is Steinway's best and most expensive piano. And the F308 is Fazioli's best and most expensive piano. So on that level, it's a perfectly even comparison. The F308 just happens to be a little bit bigger. But also, I believe that if I had a 278 or maybe even a 228, I do think that it would be able to be solid competition for a Steinway D because the, the Fazioli bases on those pianos, the bass end of those is amazing. They all sound absolutely incredible. So I don't really think that the comparison between the F308 is that unfair because they are the, the premier piano, the flagship piano for each of those brands. I just wanted to mention that before I got into this video. So without any further ado, let me start playing some music on these pianos. I'll go straight from one to the other to the other to give my feedback and do the same for a few more songs. And I hope that you guys enjoy this awesome comparison.
So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this review of three incredible pianos. And what I wanted to do now is kind of give my thoughts and opinions of the sound and the feel of the action. You heard how they all sound, but now I kind of wanted to do like I do in my normal reviews where I have just one piano, how I talk about it and I play it a little bit as I'm talking about it. I wanted to do that with all three of these. So since I played on the Steinway first, I wanted to start off on the Steinway and it absolutely is awesome. And the, some of the things that I love about it are the treble on it. It's really, really sparkly. as I've mentioned in my review of just this piano. But one thing I noticed is that the other two seem to have a little bit more presence. Also in general, both of the other ones seem to have a little bit more power. I have to turn up the recordings just a little bit higher and turn the gain up a little bit higher when I am recording this and playing it loud. The maximum volume on this piano seems to be a little bit quieter than on both the Fazioli and the Bosenerver. However, the bass end still sounds awesome on this. Let me just give a little bit of a demo on how that sounds. First, just quietly. and also very loudly. It has a very fat, a very warm sound, and a very awesome sound. And speaking of warm, I really love the mid-range of this piano. It's probably my favorite thing about this particular piano. It works great for those Bach pieces, particularly this one. And also for Debussy. What I find is that this region right in here, at that top of that little uh, section in WC, is just bright enough to be able to sing out above the other notes, but it's not bright to the point of where it actually sounds bright. And it's a really nice sound there, actually. I really like that sound in that region of the piano. Now the action of this piano is excellent. It has a very great feel, it has a very light feel. It's very responsive if I play quick or if I play light and slow. It does everything just fine. But for my personal taste, I kind of enjoyed the action of the Fazioli a little bit more. I'll talk more about that when I get to the Fazioli, but I just like the feel of that one to myself personally a little bit more than this one. Nothing wrong with this one feels absolutely great, but for my personal taste, I do like the feel of a render just a little bit more than Steinway's new action here, which feels a lot like the Accelerated. I've been told that the Spirio R actually uses a completely brand new action. It's not an Accelerated, it's not a Renner, it's not a hybrid of the two, it's not a modified. Apparently, it's something totally different and totally brand new. <gasps> Although to me, I think it feels a little bit like the old Accelerated action, but it does have a very nice feel. So that is the sound and my thoughts of the Steinway piano. I think it has a little bit less presence, a little bit less sympathetic resonance as well in the treble. If I just play a few notes up here. They have excellent sustain. The treble sustain, even up here in the sixth octave, is really good, but I don't think that it has quite as much sympathetic resonance as the other piano. So let me move over to the others and show you those. But before I do that, I wanted to mention one more thing about this. One thing I'm noticing down here in the bass, especially right in here, is that when you play a note loud and briefly, the damper takes a little bit of time to um, cut off the string, and you might think that makes sense, but I'll demo that on the Fazioli, and you'll hear there's a much different sound down here. Here are when you play it. It takes a little moment for the damper to stop uh, vibrating the string. But on the Fazioli, the cutoff point, if you will, or the decay of the note is very, very, very quick when you let go of the string, I mean, of the key. And also the dampers kind of have a little bit of like a harmonic sound when they seat back down. It might not come through on the recording, but especially with that G. Hear that kind of high pitched overtone at the end? Might not be coming through on the recording, might just be me, but. That B, I hear lots of really high pitched overtones after the damper is done um, making the string stop. So that's something I noticed that's kind of interesting about the design of the Steinway. But let's go check out the Fazioli and see how that one sounds. So, my thoughts of the Fazioli. I absolutely love Fazioli pianos. I've played on quite a few of them, and there hasn't been a single one that I didn't like, which is saying a lot. But Fazioli pianos, to me, the actions on them are phenomenal. The sounds of them, just there's something about the, the sound, the richness of the bass, the warmth of the mid-range is all beautiful. And also, the treble on these pianos is always impeccable. It's always bright, it's always sparkly. And on this particular one, it seems to be extra resonant. I haven't really noticed before that Fazioli's were particularly resonant, but this one really seems to be. Check this out.
I believe that was the same little thing I played on the Steinway to test out the resonance, and you can probably hear there's a little bit more of it here. And overall, this piano has a lot more presence than that of the Steinway, and that would probably be in part to the extra foot or so, maybe a little more, that this piano has over the Steinway. However, I do believe that if we had a 9-foot Fazioli, which would be the 278, or even a 228, I do think that the 228 would come very, very close to the sound of the Steinway and to the presence of the Steinway, and that the 278 would probably be equal or possibly even better as far as the presence and the volume of the piano is concerned. This thing is an absolute powerhouse, and really all of Fazio's that I've played have had a lot of power. They've been very consistent. They've had a lot of power, and they have a really wonderful sound. The bass on these is amazing, and I love it. And every time I sit down at a Fazio and I play the low notes, I just go, ah, I love it. I absolutely love it. The whole sound of the piano is absolutely magnificent, but I do want to point out here that I mentioned on the Steinway that the the note endings, when you let go of the key really quickly, when you play staccato notes, there was kind of the dampers rung a bit and they had some sympathetic not sympathetic, like harmonic sounds. If you do that on here, there's like none of it. That one has a tiny bit, a little bit, maybe, but it almost sounds like it's sympathetic and resonating with the other strings. It's such a clean sound. I have no idea how Fatsuli managed to do that. This just has such a clean sound down here. It's really unbelievable. Maybe the dampers are extra heavy or thick, or they really hug the strings really tight. I don't know how they did it, but it's really, really impressive. Even all the way down to, I think it's this low B flat where the strings, the last uh, triple strung string in the bass, even that one hardly has any. If you get down below that, that one takes a little bit of time to damp the string as you can see. But even on that note, there's still no harmonic overtones that you can hear after the string is done ringing. It rings a little bit, and then it's gone, which is really interesting. Of course, the low strings take a while to dampen, but even those, I'm not hearing a whole lot of harmonic sounds. So that is something that's kind of interesting. The action on this piano is amazing. It's my favorite out of the three in this room. I love the feeling of it. The, probably the best thing about it is the dynamic range you have with it. You can play extremely, extremely quietly. And pretty much as long as the key is making contact with the key bed, and you're pushing that note all the way down, you're gonna be making a sound. It's not like on some pianos where the note goes down and the key doesn't sound. The only way you'd push a key down and have it not make sound in this is if you don't push it down all the way. And I'm hardly touching that. And it's making sound. And the action on this thing is absolutely unbelievable. It's probably my favorite, or one of my favorites for sure, and it just feels absolutely amazing. Playing fast or playing soft and slow, it handles it all, and it's really, really amazing. I think that's about all I have to say about the F308 and why I love it, but it's an absolutely fantastic piano. So then you might be wondering, what are my thoughts on the Bosendorfer 290? Well, there's one thing I wanted to clear up before I go any further, and that was, if you're here in the ending of this video pretty much, you might still be here. I mentioned at the beginning, and you'll probably remember, that I said that this piano was a few years old. And that's because this piano is in excellent condition. When I sit down at it, I don't think of a piano that's actually from 1993 because it doesn't look like one and it doesn't play like one. And what I mean is that it plays pretty much like a brand new piano and it definitely sounds incredible. I would have to say that this is the best 290 Imperial that I have run across and it's got a wonderful sound and an incredible feel and of course it has the cool factor of having the extra keys in the bass which is always awesome. But aside from that, which I will touch on a little bit, but my thoughts of this piano are that this one might even have more resonance than the Fazioli. It has a really, really wonderful sound up here. Listen to that.
The treble on this piano is the typical German sound. It's that cold, that icy, that crisp sound. Some people love it, some people don't. I do enjoy it, and it has a very, very crisp sound. Like I said, it sounds kind of cold, and it's just got that really wonderful sound. It's very, very nice. It is very bright. It does compete very, very well with the mid-range and the bass. And the bass on this piano, I have to add, is absolutely amazing. It's really, really rich down here. Much more so than the Steinway. And if I didn't mention it, the bass on the Fazzoli, I believe, is a bit more rich and does have more presence than the Steinway D. And this one also is in that category. It has a lot more just thickness to the sound, and I can't really describe it, but playing the low, like the low, perhaps from this F down, the whole bass register sounds great, but try from this F down to A0, the normal bottom note on pianos, it is thick and rich and extra deep sounding and really, really beautiful. Now, whether that's the chemistry of the strings that Bosenriffer used, or whether that's because of the resonance of the extra bass strings below A0, I really don't know, but it has a really, really wonderful sound. Now, this piano's one weakness, and I'm going to be honest here, the piano's one weakness, I think, is playing loud. The Steinway, I think, did very, very well playing loud, and the Fazioli did excellent playing loud, but I think that this piano, because of the age of the hammers, I think sounds a little bit bright and doesn't have it doesn't feel quite the same when you play loud on it, and I don't think that it works quite as well when playing loud. That's just my honest personal opinion, but playing quietly on this piano and playing medium loud sounds absolutely wonderful. Now, of course, it can play loud. You heard me play that Pirates of the Caribbean there, but I think that that piece worked a little bit better on the Steinway, and it worked a little bit better on the Fazioli than it did on the Bosner. And that's just my personal honest opinion, but the rest of the piano is absolutely incredible, and as I said at the beginning, this is the best 290 Imperial I've run across, and I mean that. It's absolutely amazing. And overall, it's just a fantastic piano. It has a really, really wonderful, rich sound down here overall. It sounds so good and so cool, and I really, really love the sound of that bass. Now, I did mention that it does have the extra keys down here, which are really, really fun to play around with. That sounds amazing. That sounds really, really cool. And there's certain pieces that work really, really well with those low bass chords. I tried playing Pirates of the Caribbean off camera with the bass shifted an octave down, and unfortunately that didn't really work all that well. But these extra keys are pretty, very cool. That's the sound of the extra keys there. So that adds a little bit of extra cool factor to this piano, and the piano overall is a really fantastic 290. The action on it is another thing that I think lacks a little bit when compared to the Fazzoli and compared to the Steinway. Both of those have an incredibly refined feel. They feel very smooth. In another video I filmed of a Mason 50, I used the word creamy to describe the action, and people actually seemed to like that. I thought people would think that was really weird. But that also kind of works on the other two pianos in this room, the Steinway and the Fazzoli. Compared to this, they feel very creamy. Me, this one feels a little bit more chunky, if you will. It's like chunky peanut butter versus creamy peanut butter. The other two are like creamy peanut butter, and this one is a little bit chunky. However, that's not necessarily bad, because an action like this is it's really fantastic for practicing on, because it can build up finger dexterity and just build up dexterity in general and get you used to playing a heavier piano. And some people might disagree, but when you're practicing on an instrument with a heavy action and you go to perform on a piano with a light action, there's actually a bit of a, there's less of a learning curve there than if you go from practicing and being used to a piano with a light action and you go to perform on a piano with a heavy action. So for a performance instance, I would probably choose the Fazzoli F308, but for a practicing out of all th three of these, not that really the 290 is the best instrument to practice on because of what it is, it really should be preserved, but for practicing out of all three of these, I think the action in this would actually be really, really great for that. And it is kind of that chunky feel, but it, it still is responsive. I have no difficulties whatsoever playing any pieces on it, whether it's Claire de Lune, or just some nice simple Bach. I have no difficulties whatsoever, and I've, there's nothing actually wrong with it. It just has a bit of a different feel. A new Bosun River would definitely be in line with the Fazzoli and with the Steinway. They would have a, a lighter action, a more smooth, very, very consistent action, and it would be a really tough decision to decide which action I liked the best, because the new Bosun River actions on the 280 VC and even some of the smaller models are really top-notch, and they're really great. 
So now I have come to the hardest part of this video. Which piano wins among this three-way comparison? Is it the Steinway, the Fazioli, or the Bosendorfer? Now, sometimes things can come out differently on the recorder. Sometimes things sound a little bit different on the recording than they do in person. So if you have a different opinion of this, perhaps that is why, or perhaps you simply just have different tastes than I do. But I think that the winner of this uh, competition, this championship, if you will, is the Fazioli. And for me, I think that the winner here is clear. The Fazioli has more presence, it has more power, the action is impeccable, and I love the sound, and also the appearance. It's a very attractive piano. But I wasn't really factoring that into which piano won. It was really only based on my performance aspects of the piano. But the sound of it, the feel of it, and everything else about it, I think is superior to the other pianos in the room. But where it actually became very difficult for me was which of these two, the Steinway D, which is sitting here, and the Bosner for 290 sitting here, which of these got second place and which one got third place? That decision was actually a lot harder for me to decide than I expected. I honestly expected that it would be very clear one of them would be much better than the other, just like it was very clear to me that the Fazioli F-38 was much better than either of these two pianos. But there's things that I love and adore about both of these pianos. I love the feel of the action on this Steinway. I think it's a little, for my personal taste, I like it a little bit less than the action of the Fazioli, but there's nothing wrong with it and it is an excellent action. The sound of the mid-range on the Steinway, like the range of that Bach piece and the range of the Claire de Lune, I think is amazing. But where I think the Steinway lacks is in the presence and the volume, I think it's a lot less than even the 290 and also the 308 and I think that the sound of the bass while it is very good I think it's not quite as good as the sound of the um, bass on here or on the Imperial and there's things that I love about the Imperial like I just said I absolutely love the low bass. It is phenomenal. It's rich. It's deep. It's growly It's really everything that I love about the bass B And but there's also things that I don't like quite so much about the Imperial and the main one of those is the action It's a little bit clunky and chunky compared to a modern-day action. It works well But I do like the actions on the other two pianos more. I thought there was something else I wanted to mention Oh, I do love the sympathy resonance up here on the Bosendorfer, but I also love it on the Steinway as well. The Steinway also has a very good treble. And so there's things that I love about both of these pianos, and there's things that I don't like quite so much about both of these pianos. And so the, um, the, the competition between these two, I think, was very tight. But the thing you have to know about the Bosendorfer Imperial is that it is from 1993, and I think that that is one of the things that you have to take into consideration here. For a piano of that age, it is excellent, but compared to a piano, a modern piano, it does kind of pale in comparison. So what I'm going to do is the Fazili F308 is number one. I'm going to put the Steinway D into number two, and I'm going to put the Bosendorfer Imperial 290 in so spot number three. Now, if there was a new Bosendorfer, a new 280 VC, that would be a difficult comparison. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there's a couple other piano manufacturers that also make phenomenal pianos that couldn't really fit into this room, but I would still love to have them side by side with these three pianos to really see how they compare. The Yamaha CFX is, in my opinion, an excellent piano. The action, I think, is on par, as well as the sound, is on par with a Concert Grand Fazioli. And also a Blutner Model 1, specifically one that's been regulated by Knut Blutner, I played a few of those recently in Texas, and those are really good pianos. I think it'll be interesting to see which piano has more sympathetic resonance, the Imperial or one of those, because those, of course, have the aliquot stringing, and when Knut Blutner voices them, they are warm and they are rich, and they are surprisingly close to the sound of a Fazioli. I did a comparison in Texas where I compared a 7-foot Fazioli and a 7-foot Blutner, and the competition was actually surprisingly close for the Blutner. So, a Blutner Model 1, and a Yamaha CFX, I think, also deserve to be in this room, and at least to be mentioned in this video, that they would deserve to be in the championship of the world's greatest pianos. But since I have these three, again, the order that I think I want to put these in is the Fazioli is the king, the F-308, they call it the King Fazioli. That is number one. The sound of this piano, I think, does reign above the sound of the Steinway and the sound of the Bosenhofer. The Steinway comes in number two for me. The warmness of that mid-range, which the owner specifically wanted from the uh, technician, 
Jack Nixon did an awesome job on that because the mid-range of that piano is really wonderful and the bass is very good. I also love the treble. The sustain is excellent. The sound of it is excellent and I really like the sound of it. And in third position, we have the Bosen River Imperial with that rich, deep bass that I absolutely love and the beautiful, sympathetic treble that I think has might even have a little bit more sympathetic resonance than the Frazzilli, which has a little bit more than the Steinway, which I think is kind of interesting. I wasn't really expecting that. Perhaps that sympathetic resonance is coming from the extra keys on the end, which again are adding a little bit to the cool factor of this piano, or perhaps that's just simply the design of this piano. But this comes in number three, Steinway comes in number two, and the winner of today's competition is the Fazioli F308. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. This has been a video that I'm probably never going to get to do again because who else has these three pianos or even three pianos of this caliber in their house? I would love to thank the owner of these pianos very much for letting me come into his house. If I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, I think I did though, the link to his YouTube channel will be in the description of this video. So if you liked this video, you like his pianos, you think he's awesome for letting me come review them, go check out his channel, go watch his videos, and go thank him for letting me come into his house. And if you liked my video of it and you liked hearing these three pianos, you also might want to check out my channel because I have a few other comparisons of really cool pianos. Nothing quite of this level, nothing quite this complex, but I do have a few comparisons between, like I said, the Frazioli and the Blutner and also just reviews of pianos, organs, keyboards, and other really neat musical instruments. So if you want to go check all that out, you can. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like. You might want to think about subscribing, but if you subscribe to me, you also should really go subscribe to the guy who let me into his house so, and to play his piano. So go subscribe to him as well in the description of the video. If you liked all of it, thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing to both me and him. And I'll see you in the next video, or maybe he'll see you in one of his videos. Goodbye.